Late night rides can be the most soothing. On our way to Baltimore, it was as smooth as it gets. Clear highways and clear night skies. Just right before an early morning flight. Our destination, Mobile, Alabama. First stop, Atlanta. On to New Orleans. It was a blessed fellowship with the saints of God. Abundance of laughs and excitement during our travels. Mishcon Galleries was a great sight to see. Dr. David Hamilton has given himself over to knowing the subject of the tabernacle in great detail. Even going as far as building the furniture of the tabernacle and temple as written in the Holy Scriptures by hand. Our first day in Mobile, Alabama, he gave us a free tour. Check it out. There's a holy and beautiful city Whose builder and ruler is God John saw it descending from heaven When Patmos in exile he trod Its high massive walls were of jasper the city itself is pure gold And when my frail tent here is folded Mine eyes shall its glory be a whole No sin is allowed in that city And nothing defiling nor mean no pain, no sickness can enter No creep in that city is seen No parting words ever spoken There's nothing in earth to destroy And when my frail tent here is folded Mine eyes shall that glory be a home In that bright city Ah. Uh -huh. 
Say that. You say this is four feet in the ground? Yeah. It's close to the gate. Yes, and I had a gentleman that's an expert at welding and right. that kind of work. Let's just leave it open because we've got some others coming in. Now, what we're going to do tomorrow, when we actually do the tour, I'm going to take you through the gardens. And there are biblical plants here. And I'm not going to show you where they are, but one of the plants is acacia. That is what the Ark of the Covenant is made from. The table of showbread, the altar of incense, the boards of the tabernacle is made from acacia. I'm going to show you that. Also, uh, ha have you heard of hyssop? Yep. Yeah. Sister Val, when we was there in December, a year and a half ago, I took a little, I don't know if you remember, but I took a little clipping from the old city walls of Jerusalem. Tomorrow I'm going to show you where it's growing. Okay? Oh. And then in 09, the reason I asked you what year it was when we were there on our tour, you said 07? 07, November. In 09, I did a tour and I bought a box of dates when I was in uh, Jerusalem, brought them back here to eat here. They had pits or seeds. Yeah. And so the seeds dried after I ate the dates. And tomorrow I'm going to show you my Judean date palm growing from those seeds. Tomorrow I'm going to show you a frankincense tree. I'm going to show you an olive tree. I'm going to show you uh, uh, the citron, which the rabbis believe is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I'm going to show you that. So this is going to be in our garden tour tomorrow, okay? And like I said, this is going to be orientation of what we're going to be seeing. Now, the gallery, we're getting ready to go into the gallery. You're going to be, as young people see, blown away. Because what you're going to see, it is the largest, most elaborate private collection of biblical reproductions in the world. I have, I have collections all over the world. Um, they built a full-size Noah's Ark in Hong Kong. And in 09, they asked Mishkan Galleries to provide them with a collection of temple and tabernacle furniture for a permanent exhibition in Hong Kong, which we provided. We flew there and got everything touched up and ready for their opening. Um, the you, Being from D.C., I don't know if you've heard of the Holy Land experience in, yeah, was, in yes. Orlando. Yes. Uh, years ago, Paul Crouch contacted me, saw some of my work, and asked me if I would replace the tabernacle furniture at the Holy Land experience with Mishkan Galleries rendering. So that's my work there as well. All right, and then uh, not so very long ago, T.D. Jakes bought a set of tabernacle furniture and my full-size tabernacle that I built for Benny Hinn. And so I used that tabernacle for several years and then uh, T.D. Jakes bought that after I had built a replacement, a smaller replacement for it. So if you see him teaching tabernacle with an Ark of the Covenant, it came from here. Uh, yeah. um, collections all over the world. There's other ministries up in Chicago that's bought uh, collections. Uh, a pastor in North, um, and no, east of Dallas is getting ready to purchase a set of tabernacle furniture. But with all that being said, the best is still here. Mm. I never let the best go. Yeah. What I do when I build something that's better than what I have in the gallery, if it's an Ark of the Covenant or a table of showbread, a menorah, I will take the best I built, put it in here. Take what's in there, put it in my traveling collection. Take out the traveling collection and that's what I make available for sale or I retire that piece, okay? But you're going to see the best. You'll see the best of best right here. Uh, tomorrow, you're welcome to take pictures. You're welcome to take pictures this evening. Uh, ask questions. I do request that if you have purses on your arm or your shoulder, sometimes your purse sticks further out. And I don't have barricades, so you'll have to watch because you may be closer to something than you realize. And you may not hit it, but your purse may. So just watch your purse if it's on your shoulder, okay? Let's go in the gallery. How do you say tabernacle in Hebrew? Sweet. Let's go in the gallery. Come on. No, it's to you. That was a 
Yeah, Raymond word. Yeah, look at you, This is what I call the entrance gallery. Um, I will spend, I might as well tell you this while we're here, and then we'll go through and end up over here in the architectural gallery, so we'll go this direction this evening. The stained glass window was purchased by Jan Crouch, and uh, she was touring Europe, and she found several stained glass windows. When I say Jan Crouch, are you familiar with who I'm speaking of? All right, TBN, the founder and uh, the wife of the founder, Paul Crouch. But anyway, she found this one in Europe, along with other stained glass windows, and she earmarked this one for the studio here in Mobile. Have you been, did you ever go to the studio there by, on I-65 Service Road, the TBN studio that was there? They were there for several years, but they closed in 2017. And uh, I knew the engineers, and I knew the manager of the station. As a matter of fact, I was on TBN there a couple times. And, and this was over the main set. Most all of their recordings and everything, this was over the fireplace. Uh, this is what would be seen right here. And when I heard that they were closing the station, I mentioned to them, I'm interested in this stained glass window. And they said, it will be available, and we're going to have an estate sale. And we're going to price everything, and people are going to bid on it. It would be an auction. And so they said, the only thing is, you'll have to take it down. It was still installed over the mantle, uh, probably seven or eight feet up on the wall. Very heavy, extremely heavy. And you would have to, or the person taking it down would have to take the risk of removing it. So they had a price on it, and I need to finish cleaning the stick off right down there in the corner. I mean, I did clean it off. I, I noticed that in my last tour. But anyway, several hundred dollars. And I thought, I'm not going to bid on that and take it down and run the risk of, you know, it breaking. So I didn't even bid on it. So a few weeks later, the manager of the station at TBN called me and said, well, the window's still available. You want it. I said, well, I'll come up and talk to them. So I left and went up, talked to them. Not, it wasn't very far from your hotel where you stayed. It's on that same service room. And uh, I went up, and one of the CEOs from uh, TBN uh, was here from Santa Ana, California. It's where their home off, corporate office is. And he was there, and I asked him, I said, and the beautiful thing was their contractors had already taken the window down, and it was laying on the floor. That was a plus. <laughs> and I asked the CEO, I said, how much would you take for this window? He said, make me an offer. I thought, well, it was several hundred hanging. I took a stab at it. And I said, I'll give you a hundred bucks. <laughs> he said, sold. <laughs> sold. So, wow. now I took it to, I took pictures of it and took it to a stained glass dealer, a stained glass window dealer store here in Mobile. I wanted him to come out and look at it and see if he could tell me something about the window. And he looked very closely at the faces and the, the eyes and parts of it. He said, until I see it personally, he said, it kind of looks like a Tiffany. Mm -hmm. So there's no telling what it's worth. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, it it, it's yeah. worth something. And here's the story. Here's the story behind the window the Lord gave me. Wow. And I, I'm, you know, a lot of stained glass windows have, and this is no reflection to any religion or any church group, but there are some stained glass windows that just looks like it should be in a Catholic church. Uh -huh. yeah. You know, they just have yeah. that. Right. You know, it's usually yeah. hands. Yeah. Kind of, I don't know what this is about. You know? yeah. But anyway, uh, and it just did not have that look. And after I had it, and I thought this would be perfect for the entrance, God gave us a blueprint of that house, and he called it the tabernacle. 
He called it the pattern of heavenly things. In order to build the house right, we've got to build it by the pattern. Right. As a child, God put an understanding of building and architecture in my DNA. Mm -hmm. So when I got to that place, setting on that rock, when God birthed it in my spirit, you're going to talk about my house. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a building of mortar and bricks and wood mm -hmm. and stone, mm -hmm. but it's going to be the house I will dwell in. And so this picture tells me this. Even as a child, God had his hand on me, yes. directing me. Yes. Because God knew the direction my life would take. So many, and I wrote this down a couple of years ago. Many people live their entire life looking for God's will mm -hmm. oh, yeah. for their life. I am privileged to walk and live in God's will. Mm -hmm. wow, that's and awesome. some of you know that as well. Mm -hmm. To know you are exactly where God wants you. Mm -hmm. And unless God changes my DNA, mm -hmm. I will die doing this. Now, I've been to way back, and I taught Tabernacle. Mm -hmm. How many years ago? Oh, my God. Uh, Show the house Do you remember that? Show the house so where is the house? Yeah. You remember that? So, and, and, you know, I teach by repetition, but you hadn't forgotten it. Had. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so that is this passion that God has put in me. Now, You've stepped into my galleries, and years ago, I needed a place to put things that don't travel with me, and I didn't want to fill the house up, and, and so I needed somewhere to put them, and I needed a, a workshop to build them and repair them, so I built this building. This is my second building. My old building is still standing back over there. Where is that? I, I, this is all new to me. I'm going to put old building. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you, I think you came here. It's just changed. During COVID, I spent those months, the shutdown, expanding this gap. You remember that teaching? Yes. When God's house is in order, God shows up. Oh, yes. <laughs> I feel the presence of the Lord. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. We are too close to the end time to yes. play church. That's right. oh, yes. Yes. It is time that we get the house in order. Yes. Thank you. And so what we'll deal with tomorrow are some of those things that may help us understand the order that God wants in the house. So when we step into the tabernacle room, I want you to sense Maybe what the priest sensed when he walked into that sanctuary. Now, the furniture is biblical size. The rooms are not biblical in proportion. For instance, the tabernacle was 15 feet tall. This room is 12 feet tall. In other words, the rooms are smaller, but the furniture is biblical size. Okay? Now... You, you understand that there were two rooms that made up the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. You walk in that first partition we call the door, held up by five pillars. You walk through the door and you come into that first room. And the first room is called the holy place. To the right is the table of showbread. To the left is the menorah. You walk further into the room and there's a second partition we call the veil. And there's the altar of incense held up by four pillars of acacia wood overlaid with gold. On the other side of that partition are the veil, is that second room called the Holy of Holies. Okay? In that room is the Ark of the Covenant. So, you remember when Jesus was crucified, something happened in the temple. Does anybody remember? The veil was rent from top to bottom. Now, I'm glad it said from top to bottom because... God opened the door, oh, yeah. not man, because that room was 30 feet tall. Mm -hmm. So man didn't get on a ladder and do it, God did it. Mm -hmm. So when you walk into this room here, my veil is open, so you'll be able to see from the holy place to the holy of holies. Mm -hmm. And uh, But don't go past the altar of incense. Mm -hmm. It's kind of close. We will see the Ark of the Covenant up close. We're going to come back out of the room the way you went in. And we'll go in that double opening right there. Okay? And the only other set is the set I travel with. One of my very best sets. So I agree to sell him that set. Because I have a set 
that I had built for Jerusalem. I want to open up a Mishkan Galleries in Jerusalem. And this set was built for that. And so I will probably take that Jerusalem collection, put it in my travel collection, and sell the travel collection. Because that's what finances is. You know, I don't have ministries that give to this. I don't have individual support to this. You know, that would be great. But I believe that if God gives the vision, He gives the provision. Oh, yes. And so I just, I'm a hard worker. Okay, and where money is a factor, hard work makes up a difference a lot of times. What's the question? I need to be more up to date with all this stuff. I'm too busy building. I, I need an assistant to help me with that part of it. Well, the cockles help me some with some of the uh, Zoom meetings and whatever. Yeah. But anyway, uh, tomorrow, when we come to the Holy of Holies, and we're going to pass through, we're going into the Katrina Gallery, um, I want to talk to you uh, about the Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat and the gold that was in this beautiful chest. Okay? I want to deal with that tomorrow, too. Behind me is the entrance to the, look over the door, it says Katrina. Yeah. Okay. Katrina Gallery. About three and a half months after Hurricane Katrina, that was in 05, I would leave here, take my pickup, and go to the Ninth Ward. And that's where the major flooding was. And I would drive down the streets of the neighborhood and sidewalks was just piled with mountains of people's collection, life's collection. Just heaped up. FEMA was picking it up, taking it to the dump site. Oh. So I drive down these streets and I see things. Be like the Spirit of the Lord would say, you can make something with that. Mm -hmm. And so I'd get out and take it. If it was a part, I'd try to pry the part loose mm -hmm. and just get what I feel I could use. Every day for a week, I would go. Two days, I took a trailer, loaded both, brought it back, pressure washed the pieces, separated it into categories. And then I was inspired to build. Everything in the Katrina Gallery mm. is built from that debris. Mm. We'll talk about that tomorrow, too. So you look through here, and then we'll go in here. Mm -hmm. And it's working. We might talk more about that tomorrow as well. Thank you. One of my, I say one of my, I don't know if there's any favorite piece in the gallery. This was one of the reasons to expand the gallery. This was built but had nowhere to display it. This is the second period temple. This would have been the structure Jesus would have seen when he said not one stone be left upon another. It would be this here. I spent over a year just building the complex around the temple. And we're going to talk about this tomorrow as well. See, you know, we just get into this little entertainment. Yeah. I think what we need, we need an old-fashioned move of the Holy Ghost. That's it, sir. And I was sitting here this morning, and I wrote something down, and I wanted to check on it. It's Acts 10 and 44, Acts 11 and 15. Mm -hmm. And it talks about the Holy Ghost fail. I thought, God, that's what we need now. Mm -hmm. When something falls, it's going to leave an impact. All right. We need an old-fashioned fall yeah. of the Spirit where it leaves an impression when it hits. Mm -hmm. And we... I, I tell you what, I'm hungry for an apostolic restoration. Mm -hmm. And I... I 
Don't worry. I'll talk about some of this tomorrow. <laughs> but my heart is passionate. I'm hungry for a genuine yes. movement. Oh, 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 we're too busy trying to be cutting edge church. Mm -hmm. Doing it like everybody else. We've got the most modern song, the most modern yes. way to say it, and the most impressive way to impress those around us. Mm. All right. And they may be impressed, but I wonder what God mm. And I don't care what kind of building you've got. Mm -hmm. I don't care what kind of choir you've got. And I don't care the location right. of your facility. If the Shekinah is there, yeah. people's going to find you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because they are hungry right. for the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And that is what I'm hungry for. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. David said one thing out of desire. Yes. That's that. I may be king. I may wear the yeah. best. I may live in the best. I may eat the best. But David said, "There's one thing I'll, that I desire, mm -hmm. and I desire it so much I will seek after it." What is that, King David? That I might dwell in the house. In the house. It's all about the house. That's it. That I might dwell in the house. Why? Because God is in the house. Mm -hmm. if David said, I would rather be a doorkeeper yeah. if I could just get close yeah. to the house. Yeah. If I can get close to the house, I, if it's just at the door, yeah. I know I'm close to the Shekinah. You know what I tell you? I the best place in the world is the house of God. Mm. I'd rather be in the house of God than my own house. Yes. Yeah, and you know, yeah, and that's all about a good a building. building. Yeah. But I'm not talking about a building. Yeah. I'm talking yeah. about a dwelling place. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, four walls and mortar and drywall and brick is one thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking for the habitation yeah. 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 where God dwells. Yeah. You know where that's at? Right yeah. here. Yeah. And where God, and that is the reason God has put in my spirit years ago about the order of the house, mm -hmm. setting the house in order. And when it's set in order, God will, you don't have to invite God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been in some services where yeah, yeah. let's pray and invite the yeah. presence. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is not where yeah. God's invited. Mm -hmm. This is where it's God real. inhabits. Yes. Well, and God is looking for an a habitation, yeah, not an invitation. Uh -huh. And so, that's what I'm seeking after, the habitation. Mm -hmm. And if I could just be a doorkeeper, mm -hmm. close to that, I'm all right. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'll be all right. All amen. Amen. About to oh, say, I'll be sitting in here waiting for y'all to come out. One door. One door. Yeah. 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 One door. Yeah. One door. One door. One Fall asleep someday, and from the earth shall pass away. But my soul shall reach a better land. When the themes of life all fail, and the hosts of sin prevail, and God's ways we just can't understand. Oh, soon I'll wake, wake, wake up in glory. And with Jesus, I'm going to sing the redemption story. You know, I shall see a blessed face who has kept me by his grace. When I wake up in glory by and by, when my weary eyelids close and I've sung to sweet people, singing hallelujah as I go. 
know all of my sorrows will be past And I'll be free from shame and last Singing hallelujah as I go Oh, soon I wake, 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 wake me go and with Jesus, I'm gonna sing a redemption story. I shall see a blessed face who has kept me by his grace when I wake up in the real life. Oh, soon I'm gonna wake, 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 wake up in glory. And with Jesus, I'm gonna sing a redemption story. I shall see a blessed face who has kept me by his grace when I wake up in glory by and by. When I wake, wake, wake up in glory. Wake, wake, wake up in glory. Wake, wake, wake up in glory by and by. It's going to be right there. Uh, I don't know how long we're going to spend uh, tomorrow. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. We hadn't talked about lunch or dinner. You mentioned breakfast. And, you know, if you would let me, I'd like to meet you for breakfast okay. in the morning. And Absolutely. we'll do that. But if uh, you have dinner or lunch plans tomorrow and you're hungry, there's some snacks right here. Okay? <laughs>